Hey guys, welcome back to the Nerdy Basement. I'm John Ra Ramos from um, Nerdy Basement. Once again, here we are with James Bird, the director um, from Wife Like. So James, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm a little jealous of your hat. I like it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Power Rangers. Uh, I have a lot of memorabilia in, in my other office. So it's uh, I, I wear this hat a lot. <laughs> yeah, my, my whole childhood is... Uh... Ninja Turtles. So when they crossed, oh yeah, yeah, uh, that was. I think for me that was the best crossover um, that they've ever. been done with Boom Studios. So <laughs> James, wanted to ask you a very big question. What inspired you to do the story behind Wife Like? So uh, there's 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 a lot of reasons. Um, I love the real story of um, Pocahontas. Okay. And this kind of is, if you, if you peel back all the onions, this is the story of Pocahontas and like how um, the, the truth of it. And I loved hiding that inside a sci-fi, uh, like a futuristic movie that's modern day or like modern day, but then the future of that. Like I loved taking something like where, you know, a man can just own a woman, control and decide her fate and, um, everything in the news kind of like bubble is bubbling up and I, I think a lot of these stories more of them are going to be told and I think the best way as tragic and scary as it is I think the best way to let people to like inform them or um, let them deal with it is through either like humor or storytelling so this is my attempt to like uh, say hey this is really going on because it's not that far off you know of what is actually happening besides the AI part but even even the AI part if you go on YouTube yes. you'll, see, you'll see those those are getting pretty scary so. no it, it, it is it is so uh, my next question would be we spoke to Elena and she mentioned that there was a 17 days to film the the movie so tell us more about um the reasoning behind why the seven day, 17 days to film wife like? Uh, yes, so 17 days, that, that was crazy, yeah. Um, uh, I think, uh, so we have a producer, Stephen Paul, and I think he is um, obsessed and addicted to making movies. He, 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 okay. loves film. he loves film, so I think he just makes movies back to back to back to back to, um, to to fill that need. And I was lucky enough to get a wife like in there and, uh, you know, 17 days. I, I kept wondering on day, you know, on day one, two, three, how is this going to be possible for all the way up until 16? How is it possible? And then the 17th day, I'm like, oh, wow, we did it. That's, you know, that's crazy. Did that, by, by having that tight schedule, did that affect like the filming, uh, the filming window or the set designs? Uh, you know, because a lot of a lot of these, you know, films do have, you know, we have to travel to other sets or other locations. Did that affect um, while filming? Uh, I would think in most cases, yes. This one, not really, because it was a I got to it was everybody got to adapt. We had to adapt because we we went into it realizing we have 17 days. So the the crew was really good. The team was really good. The, uh, everyone. Um, was on their A game um, to just adapt to it. Like I, I've never done that before. So I had to actually adapt to it and, and learn, okay, this is a, a lot of block shooting and this is like getting one, two, three takes the most, you know. Okay. So the film is very nuanced and deeply rooted into artificial intelligence, something that technology in today, you know, uh, we both know that it's aiming to be mastered because we've seen the YouTube videos that there are already companies making like, you know, AI robots and wanted to ask how much of a fine line did you walk between making this film seem realistic, but also creative and imaginative? <clears throat> yeah. So I think, I think it's, going to be realistic like some of those videos that I see and you know half the time if you walk into someone's house they're talking to Siri or Alexa you know like they're talking to artificial intelligence that isn't that's true real thing so uh, we're seeing and the smart you know smartphones was one thing and that was like a huge step but now there's smart cars and now there's smart 
tools and smart tools. And so I think every like AI is just piling and piling, piling up that I think uh, each sci-fi about AI is just getting a little bit more realistic and realistic. And the journey is to still find a way to be imaginative and original and get to be creative with all your uh, storytelling. Okay, so one of the things that I've noticed in Wife Like is that you have a lot of like hidden um, messages or hidden like topics that you want to like, you would love to see more inside the this world of this film. So was it like intentional of you as the film uh, maker to add all of these different topics? Like say, for instance, uh, one of my most intriguing scenes is when um, the main character is back in the wife-like headquarters and he sees the ad for um, childlike. Yeah. Is this something that you wanted to, you know, do you want to like explore more in the future or is it just those little nit nit bits that you want to add to add into the story? Yeah, I would like to explore all of that. Um, I think uh, the closer we get to, you know, abandoning, you know, reason in a lot of ways and just going with AI, like it would be wife-like, it would be childlike, you know, pet-like, you know, all these people would, nothing's gonna stop us if we don't stop ourselves. And I think uh, we're doing like that snowball down the hill. We're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon there's, it's gonna be like, you know, artificial intelligence is gonna be telling us what to do next. Oh, yeah. Again, like uh, while I was watching the film and I got to that part of the of the film, I was like, wow, I, I don't know if this is going to be like something much more in the future. And I just I was like, I myself got scared about it. So I was like, yeah, this this is something that, I, that might happen in, in the future or maybe in a couple of years. Right. So my next right, question right. will be the film feels like it's like a very much dystopian feel right so mm -hmm. what was something that was intentionally done when it first um when first creating this story or something that happened along the way um so i love the i had a, an idea of how to make them like kind of jump into dream worlds and you know, because, uh, you know, when mo in movies, you go into a dream and it's like a, a dreamscape, you know, uh, yeah. it feels like it's alternate reality. Well, this would be cool if we can, I thought, if we can actually jump into a dreamscape, but it's not um, just a dream. It's like a digital reality. Like it's real there. Like she's learning things. She's talking to Ido. She, she's actually creating these things. And what I loved in Wifelike is being able to on the fly meet with the um fight coordinator and create those fights and okay. how it's like realistic but not realistic at the same time like if she leaves then they're thrown into the next dream and so that was a lot of fun for me no oh, yeah i actually did have like um the film had a lot of like very feel of like blade runner like uh themes with the neon lights and everything so i felt like you know that's why i asked the question uh because it has that that feel and i actually did love like the colors the camera shots and everything um so one of the things that i did speak to elena was that there's this one particular scene that she starts singing um a song and then she starts singing it in different languages she yeah. did mention in our in the previous interview that that was something that was like uh, all of you sat down and spoke to like making it that happen in different languages just to like send a message to like all different like uh, regions when they see the film. Is this uh, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually, me and Elena talked about that on set. Uh, um, it was during filming. That was written a couple days before we shot that scene. Um, so that was one that we, we created there because we saw how the tone was and, and we're, we were just so lucky to get an actress that is that, <laughs> um, I gifted, I guess, um, that she knows like five or six different languages fluently, you know, so she would, and she, and she could sing. So, yeah. So, yes, you know, so we, I, I wrote down some things that I thought she would like and she did the whole translation to them and sang them. So. That's 
that's amazing. So oh. my next question is the film ends on an open ended note. Are you leaving room for yourself to explore a possible sequel or sequels for wife like? Yeah, yeah. So I already have like all, all the ideas. I'm talking to um, the producer, Stephen Paul. Uh, he's shooting me ideas. I'm shooting him ideas. And so the sequel is going to be uh, even, even, even more, more fun. The, the way that it's playing out in my head. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I need, uh, I need to see that sequel as soon as it comes out. Because again, <laughs> I love this film uh, so much. I was like, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, the, the, the vision and the, the hidden messages were, were amazing. And the tone of the film was super great. And one of the things that I, I did tell Elena was that I give kudos to you because you directed her to be an AI robot in such an amazing way. And I think that that's one of the I, I will not say the hardest thing to direct, but to send, you know, to direct your actor or actress to be a full AI robot and, and in different scenes and maintain the posture is pretty, pretty hard. So yeah, yeah. She was she was so good at that. And we we created a whole game plan of like uh, percentages of like how AI are you? And we um, went from uh, you know 10% to a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, so she she was really good at that, and she was such a um, she's a perfectionist. So like every little, I had to catch every little um or throat uh, when she swallows, or uh, sometimes even the blinking we had to get uh, get perfect. And so cut, and she'd run behind. How was that? How was that? And we go through it. And, oh, okay, that was good. You know. So do you have it? Any favorite scene uh, of White Flake? I uh, do. I have a favorite scene. Yeah. Um, I do love the um, the added one, the singing one. I do love that. I love the, um, I like the end a lot. Um, Jonathan Reese Myers is a pro. He's a, uh, uh, every scene with uh, him and Elena in there together, I, re I really enjoyed. It was, no, yeah, I saw fun. that there was a lot of chemistry with, with both of them in the film and as well. I did see that there's a lot of chemistry prior with the interview with Elena that there's a lot of chemistry with with yourself um, James throughout the making of this film so I, I really do notice that if there is a sequel you will have the same like vibe um, with with the whole cast and crew uh, the the thing is that I just hope that you get more time you know like not not 17 <laughs> days <laughs> you know like that you can like that you can all sit down and like say like you know what we want to touch more broader these these subjects inside the the film um mm -hmm. do you think that there's something more that you would have liked to highlight in wife like you know before you do like a sequel of of the film um uh well i i hear a lot that sci-fis are really really supposed to highlight um the the cgi and the the setting the c but um, the way I like to tell stories is to get in like inside the bedroom or inside the house. Like I, I, I'm really into the, the interactions between the people. So this, so, and with Elena and Jonathan Reese Myers, I didn't need any CGI or anything advanced. So um, that would be up to the, like the producers, how big they want to make the world. I, I enjoy the scenes, the dialogue together, the intensity. Okay. so. My final question for today, by any chance, James, do you have any other upcoming projects or you're working <laughs> on something? Um, I, you, you just told me that you like uh, my hat. Uh, by any chance, are you working on a Power Rangers film or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film? <laughs> uh, I, may, I just wrote a thriller that I'm um, really excited about. That's um, uh, kind of has like a very Native American aspect to it. And I'm an author. I write children's books. So I have one coming out um, yeah, in a few months. Oh, that's awesome. Do, do you know that uh, what's the title of the book like that everybody can be like paying attention? <laughs> uh, no place like home. Oh, amazing. That's uh, amazing. So, James, really, really thank you very much for giving us um, the time to be with you uh, as well with the team uh, of the film. 
uh, really, I hope that we can see this sequel coming up uh, in, in a couple of years or, or earlier. I don't know. <laughs> and I yeah. hope that you have an amazing, great day. And um, I hope that the film, when it comes out in August, uh, yeah, it comes out tomorrow. I hope right, that everybody right. sits down and watches it and enjoys it as well as like I did. And I imagine you, James, and the whole cast and crew. Cool. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Thank you as, as well. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.